KSET 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. At least 15 tornadoes touched down across Mississippi and Louisiana last night. We take a look at where that severe weather is headed today. And officers shoot a fugitive multiple times during a pursuit in Floresville. We're going to tell you what he was wanted for. And outside, it is the last day of November, and it feels a little bit more like November out there. We've had gusty winds arrive overnight, which have cleared things out and cooled things down. Good morning, everybody. It is Wednesday, November 30th. Thanks for joining us. Hope you've had a good week so far. So yeah, complete difference uh, this morning with 49 degrees. Mike, I was on my way in this morning and a little gust of wind kind of moved my car sideways on Highway 281. So good advice. Yes, yeah. keep your hands on the wheel, especially if you're driving a van or a truck or something like that, because it is blustery out there. It's going to stay that way all day long. Clear skies. Yeah, a whole different story than yesterday. Yeah. And yesterday was a whole different story than Monday. So <laughs> uh, then the story changes are going to continue. Anyway, more on that in a second. Yeah, lots of clear skies out there. I'm kind of surprised this camera's not shaking a little bit more. We are at 50 out there at the airport, 41 now Kerrville. We've actually dropped down five degrees just in the past hour, and we will continue to drop down. We've got a lot of dry air out there. Wind chill temperatures, the formulas don't come into play when it's above 50, 50 or above, but look at that. The wind chill is down to 34 in Kerrville as well as in Lost Maples, and you don't need a formula to tell you, yeah, it feels a lot cooler when you step outside this morning uh, than what it actually is, and wind is out of the north at 15, 20 miles per hour. Then we've got the gusts on top of that, close to 30, Port SA, as well as Stinson 31 up there in New Braunfels. Like I said, this is going to be the case all day long. Mold is on the low side, and if you're heading off to the bus stop, Grab a coat, hang on your hat because 45 degrees and those blustery winds, that's just here in town. And then later on today, only 59 degrees. Normal high is 68. We were at 81 yesterday, so we are going to be anywhere from 20 to 25 degrees cooler than what it was yesterday. Same kind of temperatures tomorrow. Then we start to transition back again. Then there's another front. We'll get it all sorted out in just a couple of minutes. Steph, Mark. Thank you, Mike. This morning, a wanted man is no longer a threat after a chase in Floresville. According to GPS, they spotted the 33-year-old suspect wanted for an active fugitive warrant out of Guadalupe County. The chase started near Floresville High School and ended behind the HEB just across the street from the school where he was shot. He did fire multiple times at officers. Uh, this is a busy area. Fortunately, uh, our officers t did some proactive measures, locked that school down immediately. The HEB, uh, we, we kept that individual away from this area as well. Floresville Police, the Wilson County Sheriff's Office, and state troopers all responded to the incident. Now to the violent storms erupting across a wide area of the Deep South. As ABC's Mona Kassar Abdi reports, as the system moves to the north and east, we'll start to see the full extent of the damage left behind. Overnight, a tornado outbreak striking the south, where at least 15 twisters have touched down, with that number expected to rise. The National Weather Service issuing a rare, particularly dangerous situation, or PDS, as parts of Louisiana, Arkansas, Mississippi, and Alabama get slammed with severe weather. In Louisiana, two people were injured after a confirmed tornado tore through homes in Caldwell Parish. Holy cow. In this video posted by AccuWeather, extreme winds made for perilous driving conditions in Mississippi. And lightning illuminated the night sky as a tornado tore the steeple off this church. The storm system now making its way east, bringing heavy rain to the northeast and thunderstorms to the southern coast. Meanwhile, other parts of the country are dealing with winter weather. In Minnesota, the Twin Cities getting over eight inches of snow Tuesday. The snowstorm causing the airport there to close temporarily. Monaco Sarabdi, ABC News, New York. This morning, Congress is moving quickly to prevent a possible U.S. workers, rail workers strike. It's intervening in the labor dispute to stop what could be a devastating blow to the nation's economy. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi says the House will act later this morning on two separate bills. The unions have threatened to strike if an agreement can't be reached before a December 9th deadline. Democratic and Republican leaders of the House and Senate met with President Biden on Tuesday at the White House, and the group expressed optimism that the bill would receive significant bipartisan support. 
A woman has pleaded guilty in court for her role in the murder of Fort Hood soldier Vanessa Guillen. Cecily Aguilar was indicted on 11 counts for her involvement in dismembering Guillen's body before burying the remains in shallow graves. Aguilar pleaded guilty yesterday to accessory after the fact and making a false statement. She is facing a maximum of 30 years in prison. Guillen was last seen on April 22, 2020 at Fort Hood. Contractors working on a fence along the Leon River found her remains more than two months later. Aguilar was the only person charged in the case. Authorities say Army Specialist Aaron Robinson murdered Guillen, but he shot and killed himself the day after the remains were found. 435, 49 degrees. Still had a first look at a local organization's efforts to give a little Christmas magic to kids whose families are struggling to put something under the tree. A big change at quarterback for the UTSA Roadrunners as they get ready for this weekend's big matchup with North Texas. What head coach Jeff Trailer says can help the Roadrunners win this Friday in the Alamo Dome. Let's look at the roadways with Trans Guy looking over at Loop 410 and Culebra Road. Things are moving, but quiet at 4.35 a.m. And we don't really need to remind you to wear a jacket. As soon as you step outside this morning, you're going to notice that it's going to require a wardrobe change. You're watching GMSA. We'll be right back. 438, welcome back. And morning sports after getting beaten back-to-back -back games at home against LeBron James and the Lakers. The Spurs took a few days off to regroup. The Silver and Black went back to work during practice yesterday to see if they can find a way to snap out of this eight-game losing streak when they travel to Oklahoma City tonight to face the Thunder. They will still be shorthanded with both Jakob Pertl and Jeremy Sohan out with quad injuries. Tonight's game set for 7 o'clock at Paycom Center in Oklahoma City. The Roadrunners are still having to make adjustments due to injuries. Among the injuries, Brendan Brady, the starting running back for the Roadrunners, who went down in the comeback victory over UTEP this past weekend. As a result, Trailer has named Kavorian Barnes at his starting running back for this Friday's Conference USA Championship game against North Texas. Brady has played in all 12 games this season with almost 700 yards rushing and nine touchdowns. Now the redshirt freshman who has 538 yards and five TDs will be back at number one, uh, will be the number one back against Mean Green. Meanwhile, Coach Trader continued to ask the Alamo City to have 50,000 or more fans in the stands for Friday night's game. Morale of the troops right now are huge. It's been a long year. It's been a tough year. And uh, all that stuff really matters. Or I wouldn't be basically begging our crowd to try to hit 50. Yeah, I, you know, I really think we could hit 50. The UTSA attendance record for the Dome is 56,743 in the Roadrunners' first ever game back in September of 2011. Man, it's exciting, you know, after missing out on the last World Cup and, you know, watching in 2014, we really miss, really miss this. We weren't even sure if we'd have a big crowd today because, you know, people have to work, they have obligations, but people are excited about us being in the World Cup for the first time in eight years, and we have a chance today to advance. What work? Check out the fans, including the Crocketeers at Smoke Barbecue yesterday, cheering on Team USA against Iran in the World Cup. USA needed to win to move on to the knockout round. 37th minute, USA on the fast break. Sergino Dest headers the ball, gets close to the net, setting up Christian Pulisic for the goal. Pulisic takes a big hit, colliding with Iran's goalie right there, but he puts USA on the board, 1-0. In stoppage time, 98th minute, same score. Iran's last chance as they push the pace. The kick goes into the box, the header towards the goal. Mehdi Tarimi slides and pushes the ball past the goalkeeper. Matt Turner is there to make the save. Whew! A heartbreaker there for Iran. USA advances 1-0. They'll face the Netherlands on Saturday morning at 9 a.m. And we will be watching. Yes, we will. How exciting. Yeah. Time now, 441 and 48 degrees for now. Coming up next, a first look at the most striking clue in the Delphi, Indiana murder case of two girls. The Elf Louise Christmas Project working overtime this year. We'll show you how the Extra Magic volunteers will be helping uh, across the community. And welcome back. It's 444. A judge has unsealed court documents revealing new details in the Delphi, Indiana murder of two teenage girls. ABC's Alex Perez has today's GMA First Look. 
In this morning's GMA First Look, these images are the most striking clue in the Delphi, Indiana murders of Libby German and Abby Williams. Newly unsealed court documents show police believe the man in that video, which was recovered from Libby's cell phone, is suspect Richard Allen. <laughs> Allen was charged last month with murdering the girls nearly six years after their bodies were discovered. Everybody's going to keep them in their minds forever. Prosecutors believe Allen may not have acted alone. If any other person had any involvement in these murders in any way, that person or persons will be held accountable. And coming up at 7 a.m., legal expert Dan Abrams and former FBI agent Brad Garrett weigh in live on this mysterious case. With your GMA First Look, I'm Alex Perez, ABC News, New York. Well, back here at home, the Elf Louise Christmas Project is back to full speed operations. As Marilyn Morris shows us, the seasonal workshop out at Port San Antonio is bustling and volunteers are as busy as elves. Lift up. For a second grader, Autumn Threlkeld has mad elf skills. You find the present and then you wrap the present. She says the secret is in the tape. Autumn and her mom and all of these folks are helping Elf Louise deliver carefully wrapped Christmas magic to children whose families struggle to put much, if anything, under the tree. I know a lot of parents that appreciate the little boost because this year has been really hard. <laughs> And this year, the Elf Louise Christmas Project is back at full hustle and bustle. We kind of stepped back the two years of COVID, but we didn't change the basics. The uh, children still got their presents. But this year, Santa will make home deliveries again. They do still need some volunteers to wear the red suits. And volunteers are gathering again. This is your family envelope. It's a San Antonio tradition, 53 years in the making. For a little perspective, the first Elf Louise back in 1969 was able to help 13 families. Now they have so many toys, they're going to be able to help more than 5,000 local families. Families that will know a little extra joy thanks to the generosity of strangers and elves like Autumn. I feel like I, I'm making kids happy all around the world and making sure they feel loved like others. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. And let's look out there with Trans Guy looking over at Loop 410 and Culebra Road again. Things are okay there, but we will be checking with our Stephen Cavazos in the next half hour. That Isn't fog it? and mist of yesterday is gone. Yes, sir? No, I was just going to, referring to the, uh, back to the Elf Louise yeah. stuff. And just seeing people, you know, getting into the holiday getting together, spirit. Getting into the Christmas spirit there yeah. and, and giving gifts and all that stuff. It's I so put fun. my tree up yesterday. I need to try, oh, I'm going to try to do the outdoor lights today. I want to do all of this. I've, I typically have done it in the past on a day where the Mount Cedar is flooding in and it's made me sick. So I'm trying to do all this before, before we have to deal in. with the invasion yeah. of the cedar pollen. You know, it'll be interesting to see what the pollen count is later on today since mm -hmm. we do have those strong winds out there. Yeah. But if you are putting up decorations today or even just driving like Mark was talking about with those blustery winds out there, hang on both hands and hopefully you're, if you have those inflatables, they don't, aren't ending up in your neighbor's yard. This was a shot from a Sunday, but this is what it's going look like later on today with even catch it with the sun right behind the Tower of the Americas right there. Beautiful picture in those gorgeous blue skies. That's also what we're going to be seeing today. Clear sky. Yeah, a whole different story than yesterday's mist and some of that uh, little bit of fog out there. We're at 50 right now. Uh, low 50s throughout the metropolitan area. Hello to said 46 and then 40 at Kerrville. And it is windy out there, needless to say, 15, 20 mile per hour winds. Then we've got the gusts to 31 at New Braunfels, as well as Hondo, 20 Kerrville, 28 at Stinson. Wind chills. Now, like I said off the top of the show, the formulas don't come into play when it's above 50, but obviously it feels colder out there. Wind chill. Temperature 40, wind chill 33. So just kind of do the, the math here in town. It feels like it's in the mid 40s as of right now. And temperatures will actually drop into the mid 40s because that colder air is going to be coming on in here. Now we've got a lot of clear skies, the water vapor imagery not only shows the drier air, but obviously we don't have any clouds out there, but with this drier air moving on in that darker shade of gray, that means we're going to have nothing but sunshine and those beautiful deep blue skies today. Temperatures will drop down another uh, four or five degrees, so we'll bottom out here in town in the mid 40s. The wind actually keeps us from getting colder than what we could, but uh, tomorrow we'll still be on the chilly side as well, even though we won't have as much wind. Uh, we're going to be up to 55 degrees at noon and then top off at 59, so again, we'll be 
20 to almost 25 degrees cooler than what the high temperature was yesterday. We made it up to the low 80s yesterday, so the dry air continues to pump on in here. It is going to be fantastic today as well as tomorrow, although tomorrow we will start to see even though we have dry air here at the surface, more clouds kind of coming on in here. But then look what happens tomorrow night into Friday. Wind shifts back around. Here comes the humidity back in here for Friday, and that then will also help out with a couple of maybe sprinkly showers early Friday morning as well as on Saturday morning. Computer model, here comes the clouds for tomorrow. And then there's those little bit of, you know, maybe a sprinkle or two just as the humidity starts to work its way back in here. That'll be the situation Friday morning. Let me jump ahead into the weekend and here's the clouds around Friday as well as Saturday. Now, this computer model does have about midday, uh, maybe a sprinkle or two. Now, again, this is broad brush. 10% chance for a sprinkle, but this is the front that's going to move on through here. And so we will hit the low 70s early in the day on Saturday and then just drop into the mid 60s late in the afternoon and a decent breeze out there. So it'll be nice a Saturday evening. 55 degrees today at noon, sunny, windy, same thing all day long, sunny and windy, 59 high temperature, fantastic day today. And then tomorrow, another cold start, and then we only make it up into the low 50s, a lot of clouds hanging around here. Then temperatures are going to basically hold steady into Friday morning as the moisture comes back in here, the clouds, humidity, some uh, sprinkles Friday morning, and maybe a little shower to midday Saturday. Then that front comes on through. So that 72 is going to be early in the day, Saturday, about noon, mm -hmm. and we'll drop into the 60s later on. Still plenty of clouds hanging around here, but then back to the 80s next week. That's good. It should make your Christmas event in Bernie a little more pleasant. The Christmas parade in Bernie. Can't wait. He was already practicing his parade wave during oh, the yes. commercial break. Yes. yes. I think you got it down. Yeah. Okay. Okay. There's nothing, <laughs> nobody's blaming you. Nobody's blaming you. We're, we're happy for you. Proud of you. 451, 48 degrees. And coming up next, a big milestone for Harry Styles, and it's time to re enter the fantastical world of Willow on Disney Plus. Take a look at your lottery numbers this morning. Pick 3058, Fireball 7, Daily 4, 7281, Fireball 6. Cash 5, 8, 14, 15, 33, 34. And your Mega Millions, 20, 23, 37, 46, 52, Mega Ball 6, Mega Flyer 4. It looks like it's at, what, 333 million? Yes. Wow, that's a lot. Good luck, guys. About five till, the new Willow series begins today on Disney Plus, and Harry Styles hits a streaming record. For the latest of what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Jason Nathanson. Follow me. It's time to re-enter the fantastical world of Willow, the late 80s George Lucas Ron Howard fantasy film reborn as a series starring Ruby Cruz and Dempsey Brick who play the children of Val Kilmer and Joanne Wally's characters from the film. Cruz tells me she loves the movie now but didn't know much about it before getting the role. And it, I fell in love with the movie. It's so special and full of heart and just such a unique sort of... They take fantasy to a whole different... I don't know, like it, it's very contemporary as well as very fantastical and yeah. The, and now I've seen it a million times. Mm. <laughs> the first two episodes of Willow out today on Disney Plus. Disney is the parent company of ABC News. Want to take a stab at being social? I do like stabbing. It's a fitting story for a Wednesday. People love Wednesday. The Netflix Adams Family spinoff just set the record for the most hours watched in a week for an English language show on the streaming service. 341.2 million. Stranger Things Season 4 previously held the record. As it was, as it was. Speaking of streaming records, Harry Styles leading the way as the U.S. just hit a trillion music streams in a year, the first time that's ever happened. According to Luminate, which tracks music streaming, Styles' song As It Was was the most streamed track. And Luminate says a trillion streams is the equivalent of spending about 960,000 years listening to music. And hopefully Kaylee Cuoco is going somewhere fun for her birthday. The flight attendant star is 37 today, while actor and director Ben Stiller is 57. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Nathans in ABC News, Los Angeles. 456, 48 degrees. The Prince and Princess of Wales are coming to America today. We're going to show you where and when the royals will visit. The victims of Rob Elementary shooting are remembered at a special Christmas event last night. Why organizers say it's important for the community to keep celebrating. 
Let's look at the roads again with TransGuy looking a little better than yesterday. Looking at Loop 410 at Culver Road where things are moving, but Stephen Cavazos is in the studio now. We'll be checking with him very soon. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. You could see head trauma, and there were shell casings around the body. Testimony continues today for a Border Patrol agent accused of killing four women. What DPS troopers who arrested Ortiz are saying about the case. They are absolutely thrilled uh, to be coming to Boston. Prince William and Kate are coming to America for the first time since 2014. We're going to check their itinerary and when they are set to arrive. Outside with live cam, there could be a little shake to this camera as we look back towards downtown. Gusty winds moved in overnight and temperatures are dropping and have been all night long. Good morning, everybody. Last day of November. It's Wednesday, the 30th. Hey, thanks for joining us. The graphic over there, very appropriate. The I fire. Know, right? I want to put this down. <laughs> right, just, just warm your hands. <laughs> we just hope well, that you guys are prepared as well. Yeah, did did they see it or they zoomed in, right? So they, you guys they, There see you it. go. Thank see? you very much. Here, just, yeah. There you go. Just We're going to pull up. What's that? Now you can warm yourself up. We're going to yes. pull up a couple chairs right here and yeah. we'll be right here for yeah. the rest of the newscast. Do you guys mind? Why don't you do okay? virtual chairs like the virtual fires? I know, right? Oh, it's beautiful. <laughs> Definitely puts us in a good frame of mind. Yes. Yes, it does. And uh, you may want to put a log on the fire later on this evening because it is chilly out there and uh, bundle up this morning. 48 degrees. So we've dropped down another couple of notches. We've, we were starting off in the low 60s earlier this morning. So we're continuing to get that cooler air pulled on in here. Northerly wind, 12 miles per hour. That bottom number dew point is at 34 so very very dry air uh, today we're going to be only at 59 that is 10 below normal and 20 to 25 below where we were yesterday got up into the low 80s and that's going to be the situation across the board 20 25 degrees lower than yesterday's high temperature the aquifer yesterday dropped down four tenths of a foot and the allergens mold is on the low side mark was talking about this earlier it is going to be interesting to see if we get the early signs of any mountain cedar out there with these strong, gusty, why is your forehead wrinkled up? So, because a, a lot of people are like, you watch your mouth mm -hmm. about this mountain cedar thing. Yeah, <laughs> just saying. <laughs> the updated allergen pollen count is going to be coming out later on this morning, and it's usually about this time of year, right? We get that first uh, maybe a little bit of mountain cedar out there, and we've got the winds, which will definitely shake up the trees. Uh, 21 mile per hour winds there in Hondo, 20 Stinson, 12 at the airport, then the gusts on top of that. 31 Hondo. 29 Stinson and uh, 14 up there at Canyon Lake and it's going to be gusty all day long. So clear, colder, windy. We will continue to drop down a few more degrees this morning and then only upper 50s. That's it. Sunny and windy. A beautiful, beautiful November 30th day though. Tomorrow it's still going to be on the cloudy side and it's still going to be very chilly. As a matter of fact, it will be a little bit colder tomorrow. Cloud cover is going to help to keep the uh, temperatures down somewhat in the afternoon. But the humidity is going to start to work its way back in here tomorrow night into Friday, probably some sprinkles in the morning on Friday as well as on Saturday. And it's going to start off warm on Saturday. We make it all the way up into the low 70s. Then we've got another front moving on through here. This is somewhat of a change to the forecast as far as Saturday is concerned. A front's going to move through early in the afternoon, so that'll shave temperatures off somewhat. Should be a nice evening on Saturday but still on the cloudy side and cooler on Sunday. We'll get that all sorted out in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen, good morning, sir. Anything going on? Two hands on the wheel, by Two, the way. Yeah, high profile yeah. vehicles. You gotta make sure you drive safe out there. It is uh, blustery, as Mike said a little bit earlier in the newscast, but let's give you a quick look around town. We just see a few folks out there this early in the morning, and hey, that's not a problem as uh, you get a look around town. I haven't seen anything reported by TxDOT just yet, and as we get a look at these TransGuide cameras, it is a lot drier out there than what we saw yesterday. That could be because of the winds that we saw just coming uh, this morning as well. But uh, just take a look there. 35 at Ritterman. Not a whole lot of activity out there at 410 at McCullough. Pretty quiet as well. But we'll take you to the map and it's the same situation. So as long as it does stay quiet, we'll be able to talk about some of those road closures and of course what you can expect as we inch closer to December. I can't believe we're already in the last day of November. No shave November. We'll have a good update on that a little bit later on as well. But right now let's get you updated on your commute because the travel times into the Alamo City aren't too bad. Pretty pleasant from Pleasanton actually. 28 minutes on I-37 northbound. Highway 90 looks pretty normal. 30 minutes right now on those eastbound lanes. And that arrival from Lytle, 16 minutes on I-35 northbound. So perfect time to take advantage of these empty roadways. But just remember, both hands on the wheel. It is windy out there, but we'll be keeping a close eye on the roadways. And as always, make sure you do the same. Mark stuff. 
Stephen, thank you. The Border Patrol agent accused of killing four women will be back in a Bear County courtroom later this morning. Investigators from Webb County, where Agent Juan David Ortiz is accused of killing the women, were among those to testify yesterday. Our Sarah Costa joins us now with the testimony so far. Good morning. Good morning, Mark and Steph. I actually ran into that courtroom yesterday to hand off something to our crew that was covering. It was a packed courtroom, and that gun used in a string of murders allegedly by former Border Patrol Supervisor Agent Juan David Ortiz was shown in the courtroom yesterday. The jury was shown crime scene photos as well, but due to the graphic nature, Nature of them, we are not showing them. Jurors also heard from the DPS troopers who eventually arrested Ortiz. Wearing shorts, no shoes, uh, face down in the dirt, clutching a bag of M&Ms, and apparent uh, head trauma was seen from from where we were standing before the medical examiner turned over the body. You could see head trauma, and there were shell casings around the body. So one trooper testified that he saw Ortiz just hours after another woman accused him of trying to kill her. But when the trooper tried to arrest him, Ortiz took off. Body cam video shown in court shows that moment Ortiz was found hiding in a hotel parking garage. Now, this trial continues this morning around 830. You can read more about today's testimony and stream the trial live tomorrow on KSAT.com. Streaming is available on our KSAT Plus app and on our YouTube page. And this is a story we are following closely. So we're watching the trial gavel to gavel. Our Erica Hernandez will be has been in the courtroom every day. She will join us live at GMSA at nine to tell us more about her experience and what she is seeing as this case unfolds. So be sure to tune in at nine. Mark and Steph. Sarah, thank you. Uvalde's annual Christmas at the College of It remembered the victims of the Robb Elementary School shooting last night. Thousands of Christmas lights illuminated the Southwest Texas Junior College campus, and kids in the community were seen roasting marshmallows, drinking cocoa, and Santa was riding on a fire truck. Now, the most heartwarming tradition is the children performing in their choirs. Rob Elementary is missing from this year's lineup, but another school stepped in. That was Uvalde Elementary, which is now home to several former Rob students. It made me sad, honestly, to do this. But then I think about the other kids, and it, it's important for us to keep celebrating. Um, it adds faith and hope and, and lets them know that we are a community still. The 21 were honored in prayer and in a handmade ornament by the college's welding instructor. Right now it's 5.07. It's been eight years since Britain's future king, Prince William, and his wife, Kate, have been in the United States. They arrive in Boston, Massachusetts today and will be visiting a variety of American landmarks. As ABC's Derek Dennis reports, they will be here until the end of the week. This morning, coming to America, the Prince and Princess of Wales, William and Kate, arrive in Boston today for a three-day visit. They are absolutely thrilled uh, to be coming to Boston, um, in particular because it's the birthplace of President John F. Kennedy. The Royals' main event this week will be to hand out the Earthshot Prize. Inspired by JFK's Moonshot speech, it's awarded to people for their commitment to the environment. It's William and Kate's first visit to the U.S. since 2014 when they met Beyonce and Jay-Z at a Brooklyn Nets game and then traveled to Washington where William met then-President Barack Obama, William as a new dad. Something forgot to ask you as a boy. <laughs> But a lot has changed since then. Americans now have a better understanding of royal life thanks to Netflix's The Crown. How did it come to this? And it comes amid Williams' strained relationship with his U.S.-based brother, Harry. The last time we saw the brothers and their wives together was in September as they mourned the Queen in what appeared to be a rare moment of reconciliation. But the rift remains, and in just over a month, Prince Harry's much-anticipated tell-all book, Spare, is set for release, expected to explore the bad blood with William. Harry and Meghan are also set to visit the Northeast in a few days, but it's unlikely they'll see William and Kate face-to-face. -face. In Boston, security is expected to be at levels not usually seen in the state. With the royals coming, it also involves the intelligence community on a global scale. William and Kate's itinerary includes a stop at Boston City Hall to visit the mayor, the JFK Presidential Library and Museum, a visit to a tech startup, and a stop at Harvard University. By the way, President Biden is also visiting Boston on Friday. No word yet if he'll meet William and Kate. Derek Dennis, ABC News, New York.
And it's that time of year again. The streets of downtown will echo the sounds of hundreds of feet running in the annual rock and roll marathon. So this weekend, San Antonio is a place to be if you're a runner. On Saturday, the races will be held 5K and the 10K. And on Sunday, it will be the marathon and the half marathon. So just a heads up, some streets will be closed off on both days. If you need more details, we have you covered on KSAT.com. I can't remember. Are you running in this one? Yes. Awesome. Yes, the, on Sunday. The half or the? The, the half. The half. Okay. <laughs> yeah, no, you're like, don't be silly. No, no, just uh, half. <laughs> oh, good luck. Thank you. Thank of you. Of course, we're pulling for you. 510, 48 degrees on your Wednesday morning. And still ahead, Apple reveals its 2022 App Store Award winners for best apps of the year. As temperatures drop again, now is the best time to winterize your pipes at home. What a local plumber says you should do right now to avoid making costly repairs later. And Mark said this earlier, if you don't know what the weather is, once you step outside, you will go back and get that jacket. We're at 47 degrees right now, very chilly. We'll be right back. 13 past the hour, temperatures have been pretty comfortable lately, but now is the perfect time to think about freezing temperatures and freezing pipes with water leaks. The local plumber Brad Harrell says it's important for you to make time to winterize your outdoor exposed pipes. It's also the time to fix any water leaks that you've been putting off. Some pipe insulation and hose bib covers can cost you a few bucks and minutes to install versus the hundreds of dollars you'll have to pay to call a professional to make repairs. Busted hose bibs is probably the number one item that we get called for because people either don't protect them with uh, insulation, the little styrofoam covers, or um, they don't drip them. Harold says business and homeowners should also know where the water shutoff meter is located so you can stop further damage to your home. Absolutely. And I think Brad won No Shave November. <laughs> I was just looking at that great beard. <laughs> <An> outstanding <laughs> beard. 514, 47 degrees. Amazon's new feature for its digital assistant is pretty unique. We're going to show you how it creates new animated stories. Sony steps into the metaverse. A first look at its new full body VR motion tracking system. Indulgent chocolate with a luscious caramel filling. With love from San Francisco. Ghirardelli Caramel Squares. Makes life a bite better. Ready to shine from the inside out? Say yes to Nature's Bounty Advanced Gummies and Jelly Beans. The number one brand for hair, skin, and nails. With two times more biotin to bring out more of your inner beauty. Get more with Nature's Bounty. Hope you like it, Uncle Chris. He hardly ever gushes like that. In today's Tech Bites, the best apps and games of the year, according to Apple. Be Real is the 2022 winner for the best app. It's for sharing one photo per day with your friends. And the battle game Apex Legends Mobile was named best game of the year. Amazon has launched a new AI feature to create animated stories for kids. Create with Alexa works with Echo Show devices. A child can say, Alexa, make a story. They also choose a theme, a color scheme, and mood and the AI will generate a story complete with animation, sound effects, and music. And Sony is walking into the metaverse with a new virtual reality tracking system. It uses six bands across your body to track your movements and allows users to create videos or operate avatars in real time. It goes on sale in January, price tag about $360. Those are your Tech Bytes. Have a great day. 518. Hi, Stephen. Good morning. Hey, Good morning. Uh, I know we're going to talk about this a little bit later on, but no shave, closing in on twenty five thousand dollars. Five, twenty five thousand. Yeah, our can you believe that? Year That's ever. So cool. Here's congratulations to all our guys. Uh, thank you to our viewers yep. again, our wonderful viewers who continue to support this amazing cause. Just we wouldn't be able to do this without our community and of course the support here at the station as well. So I, I got an email overnight from viewer. He goes, "Okay, I just put you over three thousand. Go get them, Tiger." Yeah. 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 You know you what? The we always see it kind of uh, <laughs> just surge. kind of surge at the very end, and and today and this year was. We're just seeing it 
I'm, I'm just so impressed. Just Me considering too. just, you know, yeah, lots of things uh, to talk about today. But let's get said. to traffic. Yes, uh, you know, not a lot to talk about there. So that's good. So as we take you over here to our map, our trans guide camera, yeah, pretty quiet out there as you see there around town. But 35 at Ritterman, uh, you are seeing some of those high profile vehicles out there. Just remember both hands on the wheel. Pretty windy out there this morning. Let's get you to the map. Not a lot to show you out there as well. Just some quiet roadways as we start the day, but be on the lookout. We still have some road work taking place here. Overlay work over off Loop 410 on the west side of San Antonio. This began over the weekend on Sunday and should continue at least until early December. We're trying to get the actual date from TxDOT right now, but uh, just right now, expect that to last until at least mid-December or early December. 8 in the evening to 5 in the morning, alternating lane closures on the frontage roads in both directions from Bandera to Marbach Road. So expect to see those closures out there, but we get it back to Transguide and again, Mike, just both hands on the wheel, especially with that wind out there this morning. Oh, yes, indeed. Very blustery winds. We're back to our little, oh, you know, wow. uh, little fire there. So yeah, just something loses it in the translation when it's a virtual picture, but you may want to uh, put a couple logs on the fire. Whoops, let me jump past that one uh, and uh, cuddle up with a little <laughs> blanket. Little guy like this. It is Queen Lily's Sweet 16. Happy birthday, Sweet 16, Queen Lily. Nobody's going to sing in here for the dog. So, all right, we got, uh, is this cam? Nope, the camera's not shaking, but we've got a lot of clear skies out there. And as we were talking about, very windy conditions. 48 right now in town, 49 Port SA, 39 at Kerrville, and wind chill temperatures. 43 is what it feels like out there at the airport, 41 Converse, and then 32 is the wind chill right now up the road in Kerrville with these winds out of the north, sustained 15, 20 miles per hour on average, and then those gusts, 25 to 30 miles per hour, and that's going to be the case throughout the rest of today. It's going to be very blustery. Nothing but sunshine and clear skies all day long. We will continue to drop down a couple of more notches this morning and then a nice warm up, but it's not going to be a huge jump in temperatures just because we will continue to kind of pump all this cool air in here on these north uh, to northeasterly winds. 55 at noon, and then we're going to make it up to 59 later on today. So we will be 10 degrees approximately below the normal high temperature and anywhere from 20 to almost 25 degrees below yesterday's high temperature because we made it up into the low 80s. Lots of sunshine today as well as overnight and then tomorrow we're going to start to see the clouds move on in here and the early morning hours, maybe a couple of little specks of uh, some drizzle around here, but that's really going to be the situation then on Friday uh, by the evening hours tomorrow as more moisture starts to work its way back in here. We may see a couple of little sprinkles here and there in the early morning hours on Friday and we keep all those clouds around. Now, as far as the humidity, obviously it has dropped down considerably, so it's really going to be comfortable. It will start to work its way in here. It's still going to be nice tomorrow, but then the humidity really comes back in here on Friday into early Saturday. And notice this little dip right here. That's the front that moves through early afternoon on Saturday. So as we warm up, we'll make it up into the low 70s early afternoon. Then we get that quick front, so that's going to and get rid of some of the humidity. We'll still keep some clouds around on Saturday throughout the rest of the, the evening hours, but we get that quick little uh, shot of some cooler air moving on in here. So by evening hours, by dinner time, we're going to be in the mid to lower 60s around, but then the humidity works its way right back in here very quickly by Sunday and into the first part of next week. So a little bit longer range model. Here's the, the front that wants to move through early afternoon. It may squeeze out a sprinkle. That I think is going to be the extent of it. And then we just keep a lot of clouds around into Sunday and maybe some sunshine going into the uh, first part of the week. But another chance of rain is going to work its way in here once we get into the middle part of next week. And that still looks like it may be a bit more of a potent front moving through by the middle of next week. 55 at noon today, sunny and windy, and it's going to stay pretty blustery all day long with plenty of sunshine. Just a gorgeous, gorgeous day, though. 59 for a high temperature tomorrow. Then lots of clouds still going to be cool, actually cooler because we are going to be uh, cloud cover is going to help to keep uh, obviously temperatures down, blocking the sunshine out there. And then the humidity comes in, so steady temperatures into Friday morning mist and drizzle and very warm and humid starting off Saturday. And that front's going to kind of trim that off some of that humidity and trim temperatures a little bit. So that 72 will be early in the afternoon on Saturday. A little bit of everything. Just about. Yeah, I mean, this was one of those this morning looking at all the data coming in. going, Wow, <laughs> having to sort everything out. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mike.
you're welcome to be prepared. 524, 70, uh, 47 degrees. And it's time to kick the tires and light the fires once again. We're going to tell you when Top Gun Maverick is returning to theaters, plus a first look at the new Super Mario movie trailer. The year's highest grossing movie was theaters for about uh, a little more than five months. That's right, but if you somehow missed it on the big screen or you want to see it a second or a third time, you're in luck. David Daniel has that and more in today's Hollywood Minute. What he has to teach you may very well mean the difference between life and death. Top Gun Maverick is zooming back into theaters. Paramount is re-releasing the blockbuster sequel, which has already grossed nearly one and a half billion dollars worldwide for a two-week run beginning Friday in cinemas across the U.S., including select IMAX and other large format theaters. Together, we are going to stop that monster. How? Look at us. We're adorable. Oh, I got this. No problem. Ah. Yes! The first full trailer is out for the Super Mario Brothers movie. Chris Pratt, Anya Taylor-Joy, Charlie Day, and Jack Black lead the voice cast of the animated adventure, which arrives in theaters April 7th. Tom Hanks is serving those who serve. The Oscar-winning actor has launched a consumer products company, Hanks for Our Troops, with all the profits going to veterans and military families. It's starting with three coffee varieties, Tom's Magic Morning Blend, First Class Joe, and a seasonal blend, Sergeant Peppermint. More info at GiveHanks, that's H-A-N-X, dot com. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. Very cool. 528, 47 degrees. And will a potential rail strike actually happen? The deadline is coming up soon. How lawmakers in Washington hope to stop it with a special vote later this morning. A bill to avert a rail strike appears to have the support in the Senate where it's likely heading after House vote this morning. How that legislation would stop a national rail strike from happening. And taking a look out there with live cam, if you haven't stepped outside, you will definitely learn that you will need your jacket today. It is 46 degrees right now. And a good morning to you. It is Wednesday, November 30th. Happy last day of November. I yes. threw out my Thanksgiving leftovers last night. If you get, oh. Yeah, if you get through to about today, it's probably Time start to, go. to start yeah. kicking them out. Ours were I gone yesterday, take a, too. Take a whiff, you know, if it smells okay. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm kidding. No, yeah. <laughs> it shouldn't look like penicillin or blue cheese. No. It should not, okay? Mm, just a just, word to the just, wise. You know, be careful. <laughs> Absolutely. How are you this morning, Stephen? We're doing good. I mean, I, I, I turned mine into a sandwich. I, yeah, I worked on the sides last night. Oh, fantastic. Kind of a, a bowl of sides. Yeah. The last of the apple pie was yeah. gone for no. us. There you go. Yeah. I love they apple were gone pie. A couple of days ago. So. Well, the weather fits the end of the month. It Finally. does. Finally. Yeah. Because yesterday was nothing like what it should be in November. And yeah, we had that front move through right on schedule. It is glorious out there this morning. Bundle up, hang on to your hat because boy, oh boy, is it windy. Temperature right now is down to 48 degrees. So the colder air has been moving on in here and temperatures have been dropping over the past couple of hours. Just last hour, we were at 50. Right before that, hourly reading was 55. We were in the low 60s the hour below that, or before that, pardon me. And so again, this colder air continues to move on in here. Air has dried out considerably on top of that. Dew points are down about 30 degrees compared to this time yesterday. It is windy out there. Winds at uh, 15, 20 miles per hour right now. 39 is the current temperature at Kerrville. 38 lost maples. 40s, a couple left over 50s elsewhere. Then you factor in the wind. And yeah, wind chill temperatures. Feels like 35 Bernie stage, 42 in a Lotus and 43 out there at the airport. Like I mentioned, 15, 20 mile per hour winds, then the gusts on top of that, 25 to 30 miles per hour. That's the situation at Hondo, and that was earlier this morning at uh, New Braunfels, and it's going to stay blustery all day long. Again, clear, cooler, windy today, and all day long, only the upper 50s. So as opposed to being 10 to 15 degrees above normal yesterday, we are 10 degrees below normal this, today, and that's going to be the situation tomorrow. It's actually going to be a little cooler tomorrow because we are going to have plenty of clouds. Then we warm up on Friday. The humidity comes back on in here starting tomorrow evening, and that's going to keep us very humid. Still clouds around Friday, a couple of sprinkles here and there. We start off humid on Saturday, but we are going to see another cool front move through here about early afternoon on Saturday. So we'll hit low 70s, then drop down in the evening. 
That'll be very, very brief, and as it comes through, it may squeeze out a sprinkle or two, but uh, could have another stronger cold front by the middle of next week. We'll talk about that in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, so the wind cause any problems, Stephen? No, not at all, Mike. In fact, it's been pretty quiet out there, so hopefully folks are taking our advice, both hands on the wheel, stay focused out on the roads this morning. Although it's quiet, yeah, that wind could be a little bit difficult to navigate for those high-profile vehicles, so again, both hands on the wheel. Even if you drive just a regular uh, car out there, just take a look at Transguide because the commute really not shaping up to be too bad, at least for this half hour. So we'll keep a close eye on things, but there's been no major issues that we're seeing on Transguide or from our friends over at TxDOT. As we take you to the map, Lots of green out there, which is a great sign that the roads are going to be quiet. A great time to take advantage of them as well. As we get you to those travel times, there's no need to rush. Take your time if you're coming into the Alamo City. Still pretty green on I-10 if you're traveling in from Seguin with those westbound lanes showing about 29 minutes at this point. Our friends down in Lavernia can expect about 33 minutes on 87 northbound right now. And for our friends in Floresville, 28 minutes to the Alamo City. So there's no real need to rush as you get your morning started early. Let's get one last look there at Trans Guy. 35 at Pine. We see a few more folks out there, but again, no major slowdowns, crashes or incidents to report just yet, but we'll keep a close eye on things. Have some update on road closures, so plan your commute ahead of time. Mark stuff. Thank you, Stephen. Natalie, breaking news. San Antonio police say it may not be a coincidence. Two suspicious fires within minutes and just a few blocks away from each other. This is happening in the medical center area along Fredericksburg Road. Katrina Weber is live on Fredericksburg Road near Wurzbach Road. And Katrina, we understand police have a possible suspect in custody. Yeah, they do. They have a man who they say they caught at the scene of another fire just down the street close to the medical drive. But this one right now, you can see arson investigators still inside this building. This is what is called the Mirage Cafe, a brand new uh, cafe that was still sort of under construction. The owner told us he was inside when he and another person noticed that there was fire out here on this outdoor patio. And you can see arson investigators going around looking for clues. Uh, he says that the fire did not seem to cause much damage inside, but just some damage out here on this outdoor cafe. Now, meanwhile, uh, this broke out a little bit after 4 o'clock this morning. They were able to get firefighters out here very quickly. But in the meantime, police were down the street when they noticed another fire uh, behind a dental office in a dumpster. They say they also noticed a man walking away from that fire. They took him into custody. They compared notes. The suspect uh, that was seen leaving this scene compared to the guy who they had in custody and they say it seemed to match. So right now they're investigating whether he may be responsible for this fire as well as the dumpster fire uh, that they where they caught him just down the road. No major damage there. It was just uh, contained to that dumpster, but the big uh, fire or at least the, the most damage would be this cafe right here. Uh, the owner says that he does expect that he'll be able to continue to do business on the inside. But again, some damage out here on this patio, all related to a suspicious fire. Reporting live in the Medical Center, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Katrina, thank you. This morning, a wanted man is no longer a threat after he was spotted down in Floresville and led multiple agencies on a foot chase while exchanging gunfire. Our Sarah Costa is here to tell us what's next in the case. Good morning. Good morning, Steph. Good morning, Mark. A lot of moving pieces to this chase that eventually led to that shootout. And it was a tip that led deputies to the suspect's whereabouts in Floresville when Wilson County deputies attempted to confront the man walking near US 181 and State Highway 97. He then ran from them toward Floresville High School. Officials contacted Floresville ISD police who locked down the school immediately. Two other schools were also placed in a secure status, according to the district. Texas DPS says the 33-year-old suspect was wanted for an active fugitive warrant out of Guadalupe County for a violation of his probation. The chase started just after 2.30 in the afternoon near that intersection of 181 and 97, passing near Floresville High School. It finally ended behind the HEB just across the street from the school. DPS says they had at least four scenes within that area where the suspect shot at officers. He did fire multiple times at officers. Uh, this is a busy area. Fortunately, uh, our officers t did some proactive measures, locked that school down immediately. The HEB, uh, we, we kept that individual away from this area as well. 
Floresville Police, the Wilson County Sheriff's Office and state troopers all responded. DPS says the man was shot multiple times during that chase. It's unclear how many shots were fired. Now, Floresville ISD officials say students and staff were secure at all times and all campuses have returned to normal operations. That man was taken to Bamsey with critical injuries. The Texas Rangers will be handling this investigation. It's unclear what other charges the man will face as a result of the pursuit. Stephanie. Thank you, Sarah. Every year at Fort Sam Houston National Cemetery, volunteers place wreaths on graves during the holiday season. But the nonprofit in charge of that tradition says they might not have enough wreaths to cover every grave this year. The CEO of Senior Veterans Incorporated is asking the public for donations to get as many wreaths as possible. They say right now only 80% of the graves will be covered. The deadline to donate is today. Wreaths will be placed on December 17th. For more information, you can head over to our website at ksat.com. It's 540. Let's take a live look at the U.S. Capitol this morning where it's a rainy morning. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi says her chamber will vote as early as today on averting a rail workers strike. Now, the measure appears to have enough bipartisan support to clear both the House and the Senate. As CNN's Amy Kiley reports, the president says he supports it, too, but that doesn't mean lawmakers really want to get involved. The nation does need to avert a rail strike. It looks like enough lawmakers agree with that to pass a bill averting a railroad shutdown. Top leaders in both parties met with the president yesterday. The Senate could take up the plan this week or next after the House vote, according to Senate sources. Without congressional action, it's possible. Jobs will be lost, even union jobs will be lost. Water will not be safe. Product will not be going to market. A strike also could increase prices for Americans already grappling with high inflation. It'd be another blow to the supply chain that could affect necessities like food. Oil and gas leaders warn consumers would see higher prices at the pump. But that doesn't mean national leaders are enthusiastic about getting involved with a labor dispute. Some may be inclined to vote against it, and uh, others are arguing that the, uh, that the economic price uh, doing that is too great. It's not an easy call, but I think we have to do it. The economy's at risk. Members of four rail unions rejected a previous agreement and are ready to strike over issues like paid sick time. The president of one of them says political involvement takes away uh, the strength and the abilities that we have to force bargaining or force the railroads into a situation to actually do the right thing. I'm Amy Kiley reporting. 542, 46 degrees. So how would you like to have all the quarter pounders with cheese you could ever want? How you could win McDonald's McGold card next. If you like the cooler weather, you just won the lottery. It is moving in overnight. We have dropped quickly in the overnight hours. It is breezy and it is 46 degrees at San Antonio International Airport. Welcome back. It's 544. In your morning consumer headlines, a record number of consumers in the U.S. went holiday shopping over the Thanksgiving weekend. And according to the National Retail Federation, 196 million Americans hit stores and went online looking for toys, televisions, clothing, and more. That's a 10% increase from last year. MasterCard said in-store sales increased 12% on Black Friday from last year. And according to Adobe Analytics, consumers also spent a total of 11.3% billion dollars on Cyber Monday. That's all great news for our economy. Well, how does free McDonald's for life sound? Yeah, we got you there. <laughs> the fast food giant is offering a chance at what's called the McGold card, also known as free Mickey D's for life. From December 5th to the 25th, each person of at least a dollar on the McDonald's app mm -hmm. gets you an entry into the drawing to win one. Three winners will get the card and each winner will get three extra cards to give away for a total of 12 winning cards. Not exactly free McDonald's for life, though. It's actually two free meals a week for 50 years. But hey, close enough. Yeah, that's that's, that's great. Yeah. yeah, the McGold card. It, and it's nice and shiny. A card in your purse that your husband won't be nervous about. Yeah, he's like, use that all you want. 546, <laughs> 46 degrees. Let's look out there with Transguide looking over at Loop 410 and now at I-35 at Pine. Things are looking good this morning. Happy Wednesday. Time check is 548. Let's get a look at the commute.
it's uh, pretty windy out there, but just make sure that you have both hands on the wheel. We've been saying that throughout the morning. Thankfully, no major slowdowns are being reported at this point. You are just seeing a lot more traffic, so maybe people are getting a jump start on their commute. Uh, we take you to the map and there's really not a lot to show you out there, but you can expect to see some road closures continuing to take place. We mentioned this one yesterday, Blanco Road here in Bear County. Sidewalk improvements are current and again, we're trying to confirm the dates with TxDOT, but we know it will take place up until late December. It starts at 9 in the morning and should wrap at 4 in the afternoon. Expect to see alternating lane closures in both directions right there from Loop 410 to Lariat Drive, but uh, it doesn't really look like that's causing any issues for any commuters. I was checking the TransGuide cameras yesterday. Quiet, which was nice, but we get it back here and we are seeing the commute pick up as we're inching closer to 6 a.m. I know we're running a little behind on time, but we do, we do want to do a quick no shave up. Yes. Yeah. Hi everybody, it's Case Has Bill and Collier, and as you can see, we are now well into the month of November. I uh, wanted to take a moment to ask you to consider, if you could, to please donate to Team Case That as we continue to try and raise money for cancer research. It is a terrible disease and sadly has impacted each and every one of us. Thanks again. Quick look at that leaderboard. All right, guys. Wow. Just fantastic. Look at Justin Horn. Just, Holy but you know what? I, smokes. There is still time, Mike. You know, it's our last <laughs> day of No Shave November, but we know that people, it's going to be neck and neck probably wow. up until the very end. Uh, but our guys have done fantastic. Just again, big thank you. These are just six of our guys, and we have nine more that you can also donate to. But what did you say, Mike, that if we can get everybody above a thousand? Sure, yeah. yeah. Fantastic. That's the goal, guys. Hey, still time to donate. Scan that QR code. It'll take you to our page. Or hold, we hold that top spot in the country. Uh, again, big thank you to our viewers, especially our GMS viewers. Yes. So yesterday Very morning, generous. I think I was at like 28 something yeah. and Justin was 26 mm -hmm. something. That's fantastic. I mean, yeah. 1400 fantastic. bucks more. We yeah. love, that's we love those we love late that. surges. And we know it's going to yes. continue this morning. Wow. All the way today and tomorrow. That way. Tomorrow as yeah. well? Yep. Okay, well, yeah. good. One more day. You know when it gets interesting is when they see the shave off. That's right. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to go. Done. <laughs> <laughs> that's just fantastic. Come on, Team Gray here. Mm -hmm. Come on, folks. You can do it. We've got another Why team. are you saying it like this? Right. Nothing. <laughs> I, I mean, go that's team. A, yeah. Go team. Go team. Uh, beautiful. The moon is in its first quarter phase right now. Gorgeous, gorgeous picture. You're going to be able to see it uh, tonight because we're going to have some beautiful clear skies tonight. You might be able to even see it uh, this morning if it has not set yet. Got a lot of clear skies out there right now. 43 is the wind chill here in town. Feels like 32 at Kerrville. 44 wind chill at Port SA and 38 up there at Canyon Lake. Winds, the gusts, 20, 25 miles per hour, 31 at Honda. We were seeing wind gusts in the low 30s up there in New Braunfels earlier this morning, and this is going to be the situation throughout the day. Dew point temperatures. These numbers are great. I mean, now we are, you know, below the very dry on the scale because yesterday at this time we had dew points well up in the 60s. So these numbers have dropped down 30, 35 degrees, even uh, look at that 37 degrees lower as far as dew points compared to this time yesterday. So much, much drier air. And that's why we've got these clear skies out there. It's not going to heat up all that much, though, because dry air, you know, if you have clear skies, dry air and light wind, you get the perfect radiational cooling. We've got dry air, clear skies, but we've got a breeze out there. So we're not going to get as cold as where we could. Obviously, we've got a wind chill to deal with, but um, just picture perfect all day long. 55 today at noon. And then a high today up to 59. So that colder air is going to continue to push on in here. And that'll be the situation tomorrow as well. So here's a uh, long range computer model and lots of uh, lots of clear skies today. Clouds come back in here overnight and tomorrow. Then Friday morning. Now, again, this tends to kind of broad brush things. A couple little sprinkly showers are going to be possible around here just because of the moisture getting pumped on in here and keep a lot of clouds around through Friday, Saturday, maybe a little speck of uh, some, you know, mist and drizzle in the morning. And then as the front moves through, and this model's not as bullish with this, a couple little sprinkly showers as that front comes through early afternoon, and that's going to push on out of here. We keep a lot of clouds, but what that front's going to do is we will be very warm on Saturday, humid in the morning as well, get up into the low 70s early afternoon and then it gets rid of some of the humidity and also will start to knock temperatures down. So late in the afternoon, Saturday evening, it is going to be much cooler around here and more kind of fallish after this little bit of a, a return of the humidity Friday and Saturday. 55 today at noon, sunny, 
gorgeous day. Get out and enjoy it. Might want to keep the windows up though, because this is going to be on the chilly side and also breezy. 59 for a high temperature today, so about 10 degrees below the normal high. And then tomorrow, we are going to be seeing Temperatures stay on the cooler side thanks to the cloud cover. Humidity comes back in late in the week on Friday, early Saturday, and then that front, maybe a sprinkle. And back to 80, though, by the first of next week. It's all over the place this week. We'll be back. Good morning. Coming up here on GMA, more than two dozen tornado reports. Just overnight in the severe weather outbreak, at least three states. And this morning, moving east, Alabama, the panhandle of Florida. I'm going to be tracking where it's headed north, especially with the wind and snow. And then we've got to get into the new stunning details on that Delphi murders case. So the court documents revealed what led police to make an arrest more than five years later. Dan Abrams and Brad Garrett are going to break it down for us. And we're going to have those stories and so much more coming up right here on Good Morning America. And we have a lot more coming your way in the next hour of Good Morning San Antonio, including important news for parents. What you need to know before you share your kids' pictures on social media. There is some new guidance there. And Trans Guide right now, live look at 410 in Jackson Keller. 410 at, wow, the cameras are zooming by like the traffic. 37 at Fair and 90 at 36th Street. They are moving the fastest I've ever seen. Stephen will slow things down and get us updated on traffic coming up. Right now, we want to get right to late breaking news. Arson investigators have taken over a case that may involve an overnight fire starter. San Antonio police have a man in custody who they say may be tied to two suspicious fires in the medical center. Katrina Weber is live near Fredericksburg and Wurzbach. Katrina, how bad is the damage there? Well, it's pretty extensive on this outdoor patio, but it did not get inside of this restaurant. But uh, the owner says that may be due to the fact that he was actually here when this started. This is the Mirage Cafe, uh, and this is where this fire broke out a little bit after 4 o'clock this morning. The owner told us that he and another person were inside doing some cleaning. When they noticed that a fire out on the outside patio, they called 911 and also tried to put out the fire on their own as they waited. Now, at about a half hour later, Police were just down the street closer to Medical Drive when they noticed a dumpster on fire. They say they also saw a man walking away from there and they took him into custody. They compared notes uh, between the person who, may, who appears to have started this fire and the dumpster fire, and they say it appears to be the same person who they have in custody. But they are going to let arson investigators figure it all out. We did see them going through this building a little while ago. They're still here on the scene as our San Antonio police, and so they're trying to sort it all out. But the, what they believe happened is that the same person started this fire as well as a dumpster fire down the street. No extensive damage down there it was contained just to that dumpster. Reporting live in the Medical Center, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. All right, a good morning to you, everyone. It is Wednesday. It is November 30th. Yeah, and it's chilly outside, 45 degrees. We'll get to the weather in just a minute, but let's go ahead and check in with Steve. Yeah, yeah those TransGuide cameras were going by pretty fast as we went to commercial break, but uh, let's get a quick look around town because things are a little bit slow. I don't have the capability to speed these up, but the good thing is our friends at TransGuide are really good about showing us the issues out on the roadway. Thankfully, these camera shots that we have on our wall aren't showing any, any big problems out there, but a few more folks watch it there at 281 by the airport and 410 at FM 78. We have a lot more folks out there again, but that's always expected at 6 a.m. So let's just get you to the map. There's no slowdown reported, at least for now. That could probably change in the next half hour or so, but just take your time out there. If you're traveling into the Alamo City, things are looking green right now. That journey from Bernie on I-10, if you're traveling in the eastbound lanes, 24 minutes down to downtown San Antonio. 281 southbound, if you're traveling in from Mulverde, no need to hurry, 27 minutes right now. And I-35 southbound, not too well from New Braunfels, 26 minutes is what you can expect at this hour, but getting back here on Transguide 37 and 9th Street, it is a quiet morning, but a windy one at that. Mike Osterhage. Oh, yes, indeed. That front moved through right on schedule and it has pulled down some colder air. We got some beautiful, beautiful clear skies out there right now. Temperature, we've knocked down another couple of notches down to 46 here in town, 45 over there at Randolph, 38 now in Kerrville, 39 in Comfort. And then you factor in the wind and it feels like 31 degrees right now. The wind chill up there in Kerrville, 40 here in town, 42 in Lotus, needless to say. <laughs> 
bundle up this morning and stay bundled up throughout the rest of today because we're going to have cool temperatures and we're going to have breezy conditions. Wind right now is 10, 15, 20 miles per hour. And then we have the gusts on top of that 28 Hondo 26 out there at the airport and gusting right about 30 at Stinson and it will stay gusty all day long. Mold is on the low side and temperatures. We will drop down another notch or two this morning. Blustery winds all day long. Clear skies, beautiful sunrise and yes, Yes, it will warm up, but not by leaps and bounds just because that colder is going to continue to pump on in here. So we'll make it up to 55 today at noon and then we top off at 59. So we will be 20 to 25 degrees cooler than what the high temperature was yesterday, which is way above normal. Today we we're way below normal and it's going to stay cool the next couple of days. More on the weekend forecast coming up in just a couple of minutes and with these cooler temperatures around here. Now is the time to really start uh, thinking about getting prepared for the inevitable of some freezing here and there, right? That's right, Mike. So as we approach the winter season, many Texans are wondering if the Texas power grid is ready. ERCOT and the Public Utility Commission of Texas, they say yes. So both agencies released readiness reports yesterday saying the grid is stable enough to handle the state's demand for the winter season but customers should expect to be called upon to lower their electrical use this winter as a high demand for electricity is expected. And meanwhile, it may be hard to think about freezing temperatures and freezing pipes with water leaks, but plumbers say now is the time to start winterizing your outdoor exposed pipes. It's also the time to fix any water leaks you've been putting off. Some pipe insulation and hose bib covers can cost you just a few bucks and minutes to install versus the hundreds of dollars you'll pay to call a professional to make those repairs. Busted hose bibs is probably the number one item that we get called for because people either don't protect them with uh, insulation, the little styrofoam covers, or um, they don't drip them. It's also a good idea to figure out where the water shut meter is located so you can prevent damage to your home. Now to those violent storms erupting across a wide area of the deep south. As ABC's Mona Kozar Abdi reports, as the systems move to the north and east, we'll start to see the full extent of the damage left behind. Overnight, a tornado outbreak striking the south, where at least 15 twisters have touched down, with that number expected to rise. The National Weather Service issuing a rare, particularly dangerous situation, or PDS, as parts of Louisiana, Arkansas, Mississippi, and Alabama get slammed with severe weather. In Louisiana, two people were injured after a confirmed tornado tore through homes in Caldwell Parish. In this video posted by AccuWeather, extreme winds made for perilous driving conditions in Mississippi and lightning illuminated the night sky as a tornado tore the steeple off this church. The storm system now making its way east, bringing heavy rain to the northeast and thunderstorms to the southern coast. Meanwhile, other parts of the country are dealing with winter weather. In Minnesota, the Twin Cities getting over eight inches of snow Tuesday, the snowstorm causing the airport there to close temporarily. Monaco Sarabdi, ABC News, New York. And this brings us to an upcoming Quesa community event. We will be hosting a seasonal depression town hall on Tuesday. We will talk about some of the warning signs, contributing factors, who is the most vulnerable, and the best options for coping with seasonal depression. We have more information on our website at Quesa.com. Other stories we're following this morning. A Bernie camp counselor accused of abusing a child is now facing a second charge. We're told 74-year-old Michael Spiller, who you see here, was indicted on another charge for indecency with a child involving the same victim. Bernie's police chief says the victim told Detective Spiller exposed himself on two different occasions during a bus trip. Investigators are hoping possible victims or witnesses will come forward if they have more information. And now to a guilty plea following the murder of Fort Hood soldier Vanessa Guillen. Cecily Aguilar was indicted on 11 counts for her involvement in dismembering Guillen's body before burying the remains in shallow graves. Aguilar pled guilty yesterday to accessory after the fact and making a false statement. Guillen was last seen on April 22, 2020 at Fort Hood. This morning, people are reacting to the passing of the Respect for Marriage Act. It went through the Senate yesterday on a 61-36 vote. 12 Republicans voted in favor, with both Texas senators voting against it. This bill can't force states to legalize same-sex and interracial marriage, but they do have to recognize legal marriages from other states. 
will also protect current marriages if the Supreme Court's 2015 decision gets overturned. Right now, 608, 45 degrees. And much more to come on GMSA. Just ahead, it looks like a railroad worker strike will not happen after all. We're going to show you how we got there. Outside with live cam. Will it warm up at all today? We're off to a chilly start. 45 degrees out at the airport. We'll be right back.